The process of picking a pope really takes anywhere from two to three weeks, even a month, because technically, as soon as a pope dies, the sede vacante is declared. There is no pope. All of the cardinals around the world are alerted. Then they go into a conclave. In modern times, the conclave has not really lasted that long. Again, you had those that time in the 13th century, nearly three years. In the last century or so, two, three, four days at most. On average, about three days is, is about what it takes. In the early centuries, um, because the pope is the bishop of Rome, that's the base of his authority. And it was the people and clergy of Rome who really elected the Pope. And then the clergy started electing the Pope in the later centuries. And then the people kind of got a thumbs up or thumbs down on the selection. And it was really only until about a thousand years ago that cardinals were given the exclusive uh, privilege, duty, right to elect a Pope. And then uh, in 1274, the conclave system developed where they were locked into the Sistine Chapel and it's closed with a key, which is what conclave means. It's a conclave, it's a, a Latin term, closed with a key. And they, you know, they vote in their secret ballots and it's always been that way. And under the modern system, they have what are called general congregations, some meetings, some opportunities to kind of kibitz and, and sort of size up each other. Because especially today, you have to realize that the, Car the College of Cardinals there are 117 eligible electors, that is, cardinals under the age of 80, uh, come from all over the world. So they're very rarely together. They don't really even know each other. So the first thing is about, you know, a week or 10 days, even two weeks of these kind of general meetings where they talk about themes, big issues facing the church. Nobody campaigns. You can't do that. That's considered kind of a faux pas, but it's also against church law. You can't campaign, no, no, nor can anyone campaign for you. At the same time, they're sizing each other up. And they're saying, oh, this is, you know, we, we've been talking about these general things that we need in the church today. And this guy, yeah, he could fit the bill. So that when, at the end of these general congregations, they finally process in a grand, solemn ritual into the, to the Sistine Chapel, for the first of what are probably a couple of days or three or four days of, at most of voting, they may have some idea of who they want to vote for. And then you, you get these ballots, two a day, two in the, uh, four a day, two ballots in the morning, two in the evening, wrap up the ballots all secret, burn them, and until you get one of the candidates who gets two-thirds majority plus one. And when you do, as soon as you get that and the cardinal is asked, if he accepts and he says, yes, he is the Pope. Then they burn the ballots and we're all standing out there in St. Peter's Square and looking up at this little, you know, farmhouse chimney sticking out of the roof of, that they put on especially for the Sistine Chapel election. And when you see white smoke, you know they've got a Pope.